Ah, uh, Halo Reach. Released in 2010, I remember the hype being so real for this game. Everyone on the Xbox 360 was so excited for this game to finally be released, and after hit game after hit game, Bungie had managed to create a universe that gamers really cared about. And it was known across the community that Halo Reach would be Bungie's final game in the Halo franchise, and Bungie wanted to go out with a bang. With really strong marketing, Bungie went full force in this final game and damn did they succeed. Sure, the multiplayer strayed from the close quarters arena play people were familiar with from Halo 2 and 3, but this game introduced so much more to the franchise. And for the most part, the community didn't even really mind. Actually, players embraced the new game types. But it has also been 7 years since the game came out, so? How does this game hold up today against more modern games? Hi guys, my name is Elijah and today on Rocket Sloth we are taking a look at Halo Reach in late 2017, early 2018. Let's see how this game holds up today. So first things first, last year Microsoft allowed this game to be played with backwards compatibility on the Xbox One. So of course it's 2017, so for this review we are playing this game on the Xbox One. I'm not going to try to ding the game too much on the first issue I ran into when trying to review this game, as it really is an issue with the Xbox One, but for some reason I kept running into a glitch immediately when I wanted to start playing the game for this review for the very first time. The game took too long to start? What? I, I don't know what caused this error, and hard resetting the console didn't even fix my problem. It took me almost 35 minutes before the game randomly started to work. And mind you, I wasn't recording the footage yet, so on the screen it, I know it says Battlefield 1, that's just similar footage to the same error message that I was seeing, and I still don't know what caused it. And mind you, I'm playing a digital copy, so it has nothing to do with a disc. Um, alright Microsoft? <laughs> It looks like I wasn't the only person having this issue either with Halo Reach. A lot of people on the Halo Waypoint forums also saw this issue too. So what gives? Once I did get the game finally started, I decided to go straight to the campaign. And surprisingly, this story holds up so well. Sure, the cutscenes I believe are only rendered out in 720p 30 frames per second, and it is obvious at first, especially coming from the Master Chief Collection and Halo 5, which typically have 60 frames per second. It didn't really affect me too much, other than the fact that I really wish Halo Reach got the same treatment as all the other main Halo games got, and here's why. Halo Reach has an outstanding campaign. Bungie decided to take a monumental moment in the Halo universe that had been talked about as early as the first Halo game and finally allow players to experience the ominous and dark story that involved Reach. From playing past games, players know that Reach doesn't have a good ending to it, but damn did Bungie give players a sense of importance. Without giving anything away if you're going to go on a replay of this game, Bungie made the Noble team possibly the most important characters in the entire series. And speaking of the Noble team, the characters were all really diverse. Each character had purpose, emotion, and there was really something three-dimensional about all of them. There's always a reason why the player is doing something and going somewhere, and the stakes are so high. Oh, and your Spartan appearance from multiplayer is brought over into your campaign. That's very cool. The cutscenes look good, they're rendered in real time with the engine, so they are about the same quality wise of what you would see from regular gameplay, but for the most part they get the job done. It's no Halo 4 by any means, but it's a step up from the original Halo 3 cutscenes. I would love to see a remaster version, once again, of this down the road. Besides the outstanding story, the level design was really great. The levels are linear enough where I never felt overwhelmed with where or what I was doing, but just open enough where I felt like I had options on how to approach things. I love the enemy classes as well. Each class of enemy is unique in one way or another, and it really added a tactical sense of deciding how to approach enemies. I strongly suggest playing on a harder difficulty like Heroic if you're playing through this solo. The game also includes a firefight mode where you can just fight waves of enemies with whatever settings you want for engagement, and it's insanely fun. But I can't reiterate enough how amazed I was that Bungie took a story that honestly had to have a darker ending 
and add a silver lining that made this game just feel so incredible. And Bungie had a pretty good track record of doing this with all of the Halo games, but this one just felt different. This game felt like failure was an option, where in all of the previous Halo games, it felt like no matter what, the Master Chief would succeed. So it was really nice to have this perspective of characters that can fail, and characters that can die, and that was really innovative for this game. Now to shift gears a little bit, we can go ahead and look at the multiplayer. Seven years ago, this game had an extremely fun multiplayer with a variety of game modes and awesome maps to play. Seriously, the maps were outstanding. While the competitive arena might not be the same as previous Halo games, I remember spending so many hours in newer games like Invasion and Infection. And I know Infection was in Halo 3, but the Infection in Halo Reach was refined a bit and added into matchmaking. There were also some really, really fun party games like Rocket Hog Race, and I can't forget about Griffball. Now, when it came time to review multiplayer this time around, the multiplayer straight up didn't work for hours. I just kept getting this error message that I didn't have Xbox Live Gold, which I did. It fixed eventually and I could play again until it happened again and again. And it looks like this has been an ongoing problem for 343 Industries who took over the series after Bungie left Microsoft. It looks like it's been months with no fix, but what makes things worse is the fact that there are a ton of other problems that people on the Halo forums are also experiencing that are also being swept under the rug. And while some of these issues didn't happen to me, it looks like there's enough people complaining about these issues that I need to talk about it. The game apparently is putting credit bans on players for the day for no reason, and players are randomly getting deranked, and there's more issues similar to what I was experiencing that were just slightly different in some way or another. Also, I had purchased the multiplayer DLC back in the day, and it appears that even when the servers were working, there are no options to play on these DLC maps. They don't get put into regular rotation like the Halo 3 DLC on the Xbox 360 did, so I guess it was kind of a waste of money. I can play them in custom games, but there's no access to these maps. Once again, if I could get the multiplayer to work, it was pretty fun. It was nice to relive some of the chaos, and it was good, but for a first-party game that Microsoft advertises as backwards compatible, it's a real shame to see a game get such a poor treatment by the team in charge of the servers. I'm really, really disappointed here. And when rating this game, I was willing to overlook the frame rate caps as the game is old, but the fact that the servers are handled so poorly when the game is advertised as a perk of owning an Xbox One, I'm really disappointed. And I feel bad for the 360 players who don't have an Xbox One that still have to deal with the same issues. That's a huge shame on Microsoft. Forge and custom games haven't seemed to have been messed up as badly, except for when you're trying to do stuff online, which is a shame, but the Forge mechanics are still really good today. Like, really good. Bungie really did great on this. I spent hours and hours back in the day forging and coming up with cool game type modes, and after just a couple of minutes in Forge, I was able to pick up the controls just like an old reflex. It was cool. I guess custom games could work if you were to find a group of people that like custom games on a day where the servers are working. There are no custom game browsers or anything like that, so you'll have to think creatively outside of just what you have at face value. I really like Halo Reach. It's a shame multiplayer is so broken right now. Had multiplayer worked the way it did back when the game first came out, it probably would have scored two points higher than what I'm actually going to score this game. I'm willing to forgive the fact that the game didn't get a remaster, even though it really deserves it, because of how great the story is. But I won't forgive full features not functioning correctly, especially from a first party game perspective under Microsoft. You don't see a game like CSGO, which is only a few years younger than Halo Reach, get this sort of neglect from game devs, and because of that support, the community stayed loyal to that game. 343 Industries, who took over the servers in 2011, have completely neglected this game, and it's an absolute shame. Despite multiplayer being unplayable, I need to reiterate again how amazing single player, firefight, forge, and custom games are. And if you can find the game for the right price, I'm talking less than $20, then it's still worth the pickup, but don't pay a cent more. This game gets a 6 out of 10. Now our second editor, Luke, also reviewed this game and gives a second opinion. 
He scored the game a 5 out of 10, citing similar problems that I had experienced, but stated that multiplayer is such an integral part of the Halo franchise that a multiplayer that doesn't function correctly deserves a larger penalty than what I originally gave. But do you agree with our opinion on this game? Did Halo Reach mean a lot to you? I know that it's one of my favorite Halo games still to this day, even despite all of the issues I've had to deal with. Let us know in the comments section down below and be sure to subscribe to Rocket Sloth for more retro game reviews, top lists, gaming discussion, and gaming news. Here at your new number one source for all things gaming.